Hi, Jamie. Hello. Do you remember when you first encountered jazz music? Yeah, it's funny with jazz. Um, I think I was at school and um, bizarrely I decided to play the trombone and I've still no idea why. I was cornered by a music teacher who said, you've got to play an instrument, you know, you feel music, you, sh you should play something. So I said, yeah, sure, trombone. <laughs> I didn't have any clue why I said trombone, but anyway, it became my instrument in a way. And, um, you know, you're going to need to play something on the trombone, right? And I didn't play, I, I did play really traditional big marching band kind of stuff. Not marching band, but um, like, you know, band music from the north of England, sure. kind of brass band stuff. But um, my passion was playing like jazz on the trombone. And like, as soon as I discovered like Miles and Coltrane and the classics, I just became like obsessed. I, I kind of was really like, what's going on? Like, uh, you know. You know, what did you discover in, in jazz music and in the artists that you just mentioned that you didn't see in, in other types of music? Well, I mean, obviously, the the flexibility of, of the players to sort of to move around, you know, to improvise. I mean, that's the thing, I, I realized that, that I, I was an improviser, mm. you know, that I wanted to improvise, that's what I liked about music. So when I discovered like jazz, I was like, oh, this form is all about that. It's all about taking 32 bars or whatever and just kind of like expressing yourself, you know, within the language of music. So it's kind of like, I love the combination of freedom on the one hand, but with like, with the discipline and also with a kind of a motive, motivation. You know, like in all those guys like Miles Davis and Coltrane, obviously there's uh, an endless array of amazing jazz musicians, but those tend to be the ones, like me and my little village, like trying to find jazz. You find Miles and Coltrane and, and like they are an incredible gateway. You know, let's be honest, they're still amazing like beacons of jazz and I think just Hearing the interplay of everyone, how everyone listens, how dynamic it is, how how it can move so quickly from one mood to the next. I mean, it's, it's intoxicating music, you know. Did it have an effect on your vocal style? Yeah, because I wanted to sing instruments. That's how I always wanted to make music as a kid. I'd try and sing guitar solos. I wasn't that bothered about the vocal parts, really. You know, that's why I think when I started to do my one-man show and I was doing all the beatbox and, you know, all the instruments, it was totally natural for me to think of it like that. Because I think it's another thing of being a bored English kid in a tiny village. There wasn't much to do, you know. So I just spent my time, like, kind of, like, humming and singing songs and learning little bits of, of, of instrumentation. And, um, yeah, jazz solos, I would learn them. I would just learn them all. I'd learn about what the bass was doing. I think as no, another thing that was cool about that era, growing up like in the 70s, 80s, yeah. you, you didn't have many records, you didn't have that many records. So you'd really like play them to death. And so you'd know exactly what the drum part was and you'd know what the bass was doing. I think the temptation these days is to have music and skip to the next thing all the time. You miss out that opportunity to really go deep with something. If something has real substance, you can you can absorb so much goodness from it. It's worth um, sticking on one thing, actually. To, oh, sorry. No, no. I don't. Is, is is there one song that sticks in your memory that, that has this effect or had this effect on you? No, not really. Not one song. Uh, it definitely, it was more a whole re you know albums would, mm. would would pass by, and I would I just sort of take them in, you know. Okay. And. Well, obviously, uh, you've used a lot more elements uh, than just jazz. You've, you've kind of right. uh, took, took music from everywhere. So, so yeah, right. how did that start to fall? Was that part of the experimentation that kind of uh, that you mentioned? Well, jazz. Well, no, no, the, the just trying trying out different types of music. And, and yeah, music. yeah. I mean, I, I guess I have a nothing sacred kind of attitude. Okay. It, it, hopefully, in the best possible way. I mean that I also came from the generation and my main instrument was the sampler. Mm. Although I never used it in that kind of mad lib, you know, way where I wasn't sampling records per se, you know. I, I just liked the instrument that was the sampler. 
you know, I like to be able to just be able to record and manipulate sounds from all places. Mm -hmm. and I think that was the generation, I mean, that was the time where snippets from different musical forms were all getting mashed together. You had things like Herbie Hancock's Rocket and stuff. It was jazz, but it was with drum machines and it was electro and, you know, and then electro came in and electro had soul vocals and, do you know what I mean? And then Prince had drum machines and, and guitars and soul and it was like, you know, Chaka Khan, like all these things that were big pop songs, they had like synthesizers and influences mixing from all kinds of areas. So I think it was cool to grow up in that, in that time actually. A lot, of, a lot of people imagine the early 80s as one thing, but you know, you had MJ and all of that. It's the same kind of thing. Sure. And, and then, especially when you start out, is it, is it difficult then to carve out a space for yourself and to, to, to kind of figure out what, what, what it is that you want to do? Yeah, I mean, I think you just move forward and then, you know, it, I think it's, it's, it's very akin to chefing, okay. very akin to like deciding like, oh, I really like to cook all kinds of styles, you know, sure. but this, they're all delicious. So it's just kind of like knowing when something feels like it just suits you mm. or, or, or at least it's something that you feel like you'd like to explore more. So but often it's the way it is with me. I just feel like, oh, I just, I'm really into this right now. And so that making an album is almost just like putting, putting some brackets around a time period and going, I'm really into this right now. You know what I mean? Like I just happen to be really into making music with these drum machines and these synths and, and singing like this. It's just like, I'm, I'm feeling it. And then, then you go out and you know, it's like clothes. One, one year you're wearing like chinos and the next year you're wearing tight skinny jeans. You know, it's like, Nothing really changed, you just kind of want to try something else, you know? Right. Just want to mess with it, because it's fun, you know? And, and so, in that sense, can it be from song to song for you? Is it more from album to album, uh, like larger periods? It can be song to song, by all means, you know? I mean, yeah. I, I, I try to sort of keep that schizophrenia to a minimum nowadays, even mm. though it doesn't mean that I'm not thinking and making all kinds of wild other stuff. Sure. But I just sometimes, yeah, I like to present like something that feels coherent. I think maybe, I don't know whether it's that important or not, but I just feel like it's a bit overwhelming if you just sort of are changing the mood every song. But I've done that before. <laughs> You know, when I made Muddling Gear, my album in 1999, every song was different, a different genre, from doo-wop to like really aggressive stuff to really minimalist dots and dust music, and, you know, decadent noise pieces, everything all thrown together, you know, R&B. <laughs> this might be a difficult question to answer, them, but have you found what kind of where you gravitate towards, what kind of suits you, or is, is there kind of a line through, through everything? I think it really depends on how I'm feeling when I sing, you know, sort of like what I want to sing usually dictates the landscape, you know. Um, right now I'm feeling a certain kind of vocal energy. So yeah, that sort of like helps me in a way to see like I just don't want to sing like this, I want to sing like this and I want it to be harmonically rich or something, mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll, the music can fit that. 